Hi, I'm Antonia. This is Universally Me, where we dive into Universal Studios history, classic movies, beloved actors, oftentimes horror, but not today, because today I am thrilled to answer the many requests that I received after my Mary Pickford video, and I am following up with one of Hollywood's most iconic figures, Douglas Fairbanks. Douglas Fairbanks was born Douglas Elton Thomas Ullman on May 23rd, 1883 in Denver, Colorado. His mom was married three times and Douglas got his last name from his mom's first husband, John Fairbanks. Douglas Fairbanks was notorious for pulling pranks and stunts as a young man. It seems like he was always a performer in some ways. And he always had this sense of adventure that would become one of the defining elements of his on-screen persona. He started acting as a kid, performing in Summerstock and other local productions in Denver, and at the age of 15, dropped out of school so he could tour with Frederick Ward's acting troupe. By 1902, he already had his first Broadway role in Her Lord and Master. He got married to Annabeth Sully, and in 1909, they would have Douglas Fairbanks Jr., who you've probably heard of because he later became a famous actor himself. The Fairbanks family made the move to Los Angeles in 1915, and Douglas Fairbanks soon started working for D.W. Griffith, who you may remember his future wife, Mary Pickford, was working for. The two wouldn't meet then, though. They would meet a little later, becoming fast friends after meeting at a party. Douglas Fairbanks' star was rapidly rising during this time. He became known for his bright, cheerful personality and his athleticism. He even wrote a book in his early days called Live and Laugh, which is pretty much 100 pages of saying that all you need in life is a good attitude and a good workout. Since Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks were both married when they met, they tried to maintain a true friendship. But when the US reached out to Hollywood for help promoting Liberty Bonds for World War I, Douglas Fairbanks, Mary Pickford, and Charlie Chaplin all agreed to sign on. They traveled by train to major rallies across the country, and by the time they returned, Douglas Fairbanks and Mary Pickford were surely in love. Douglas Fairbanks divorced his wife and then gave Mary Pickford, who was still married to actor Owen Moore, an ultimatum. Either she get divorced too, or the two of them were over. Mary went to Nevada to get her divorce, and though divorce was still pretty controversial at the time, the world was ecstatic when she and Douglas Fairbanks announced their marriage. They were Hollywood's first celebrity couple and practically royalty. Mary and Douglas started working together too. Their stint promoting Liberty Bonds was their first opportunity to see their star power in real life, and the crowds they drew were massive. But at the same time, studios were working hard trying to minimize their creative freedom and their salaries. Douglas Fairbanks, Mary Pickford, Charlie Chaplin, and D.W. Griffith teamed up to create United Artists, a studio intended to give the power back to the actors instead of being reliant on commercial studios. And believe it or not, United Artists existed in some form or another until just a few years ago. Douglas started acting in big action adventure films, movies like The Mask of Zorro, the Three Musketeers, The Thief of Baghdad, and Robin Hood. He defined the swashbuckler genre of films, these movies that had clear heroes and villains, sword fights, damsels in distress. Douglas did all of his own stunts, and if he wasn't already one of the biggest actors in the world, this era really solidified it. In the meantime, Douglas and Mary were living up to their golden reputation. They spent every night together for seven years. They were the first celebrities to put their hand and footprints in cement outside Grauman's Chinese Theater. They were always hosting parties for family and friends at their gorgeous Pickfair estate. They wanted to set a good example and support the communities around them, and they often hosted philanthropic events together. As the film industry transitioned to sound, Douglas Fairbanks saw some of his peers struggling and co-founded the Motion Picture Relief Fund, which deducted a small portion of studio workers' paychecks to give to those in need. Then in 1927, he co-founded the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences 
and hosted the very first Academy Awards at the Roosevelt Hotel, which if you're ever in LA, I highly recommend. It's one of my very, very favorite spots to go. Unfortunately, Douglas Fairbanks didn't fare so well after sound himself. He simply wasn't enthusiastic about it. And after years of heavy smoking, his health wasn't great either. He did make a few talky or at least part talky films, including The Iron Mask, and The Taming of the Shrew with Mary Pickford. We also maybe wouldn't have the ultra prestigious USC Film School without Douglas Fairbanks, because in collaboration with the Academy, USC became the first university to offer a bachelor's in cinema, and Professor Fairbanks taught intro to photoplay. I could not imagine having him as a professor. And in other news, you know what they say, once a cheater, always a... Well, in 1933, Douglas Fairbanks began an affair with Lady Sylvia Ashley, and by 1936, he and Mary Pickford would divorce so he could marry Lady Ashley later that year in Paris. They spent most of their final days traveling, but Douglas Fairbanks would pass away in 1939 at just 56 years old of a heart attack. In true Douglas Fairbanks fashion, his final words were, I've never felt better. He is buried at Hollywood Forever in a tomb with a long reflecting pool commissioned in his honor. And this is so LA to say, but I have actually spent many mornings taking yoga class in that very spot. It's beautiful. Between his films, his businesses, and his philanthropic work, Douglas Fairbanks' impact on the industry is immeasurable. Now in the comments, tell me your favorite Douglas Fairbanks films. Don't forget to subscribe and join the Lemley family on Patreon to support my work and for bonus content. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.